Hey there, friends. Thanks for checking in. Some of the feedback I've gotten throughout the years is that people appreciate that I feature budget guns. There are many decent budget guns in today's market that is not of budget quality. They work great, and a lot of people swear by them and carry them. However, I love higher-end guns as well. And I have some, but there are others that I just will not pay for. And these are great companies. They, they make phenomenal, I'm, I'm sticking with handguns with this, they make great pistols, but the price that they are asking for their handguns is way too much. It's out of the league. Let's start with HK. I have two HKs. I've had several throughout the years, most of which I have traded for and threw a little cash out. But you look at the VP9 that I got last year. That's going for between $700 and $800. Now, I had a little discount code. I got a little bit off. I paid in the upper $600, which is a steal for the VP9. And I got the push button. Okay, VP9B push button opposed to the uh, trigger guard release. But I also have the HK45. Now, I really wanted the MK23, but that's like $23 to $2,500 for that gun. Is it worth it? Aren't there other 45s out there that, that perform really nice? Maybe not quite as nice, but to, to pay that much for a handgun and 45 when there are so many other 1911s out there that are of equal cost, I don't know, I just think HK is out of the line when you look at the, the compact size, the full size. There are other manufacturers that offer similar handguns for less money. And you may be an HK fan. I'm an HK fan. I have two, but every one that I've had before I traded for just because of the expense of it. Now, you look at another one, FN. I have an FNS9C. I love it. That same gun in the 509 is close to 800 bucks. Now, I paid 450 for it. Now, this was a couple years ago. I, I get it, but it's essentially the same gun. We're not talking the Optic Ready one. $800 FN. Now, I'd love to get the FN 509 Tactical. That thing looks great. 4.5 inch barrel. It's got all the bells and whistles with the, the rates, sights, the Optic Ready, you know, it's a great handgun. Big fan of the 509 series, not a big fan of the cost. You're looking at, well, an MSRP is over $1,100 for that gun. Now, I see manufacturers produce guns of the similar nature. I'm not going to get into each and every aspect of the, the specs on it, but $1,100 with an MSRP, fine, take a $100 off for the store price. You're looking at a grand for a full-size gun with a threaded barrel that's optic ready. Is it just me or is that very expensive? It puts the, the average Joe out of that price range. And I think FN is in a position where they have so many military contracts that they really don't need the consumer market, but if they are going to sell to the consumer market, they're certainly going to skyrocket that price and see who's willing to pay for it. Big fan. I like FN. I just don't like the cost of them. And I think that HK and FN, in my mind, stand out as overpriced guns. Another one that a lot of people love and the Smith & Wesson revolvers, especially the older ones without the Hillary hole, I can't stand all those, the new ones with the Hillary hole in there, you know, to, to appease the government, but that's separate. The 686, okay, to get a standard 686, you're looking at over 970 bucks. All right, now, I just reviewed a SAR, SR38. 357 Magnum, same idea kind of. I'm not saying it's of the same quality, but it certainly shoots nice and accurate. It, it's going to be selling for like right around probably under $700. You're looking at a $270 difference. All right. Now, I'm not suggesting anything by that. I'm just making the point that 
There are other guns out there. People say, well, I only buy American. Well, I love American guns. I have, I have safe filled with American guns. But I also have some imports because some of the American manufacturers have their price so high that it takes you out of the out of the ballpark of the, the price range in which you are willing to pay. And if you look at HK and FN and the Smith & Wesson revolvers, oh, and by the way, the, the upper 900s, that's like a starting point. It only goes up from there as you add certain grips, performance center, some compensation on there and all that. You know, it, it really skyrockets. So when you look at those three, and I know there are many others out there, it takes it out of the price range in which most people are willing to pay. And I think they're they're reaching the point where it's it's a ripoff. For for what they're asking, it's it's way too much money. Now, I have some issues with Smith and Wesson and their quality control. I have experience, I have friends who have experience with their quality control. I think that it has been lacking big time. The last thing I'm going to do is go spend close to a grand for a revolver that I'm not 100% sure. Well, we're never 100% sure, but you know what I'm saying. We're not so confident that it's going to leave that factory in perfect condition. And, and it's just something that I have lost confidence in, in Smith & Wesson pretty much as a whole. But you look at those three, HK, FN, and Smith & Wesson, with specifically the revolvers, they're very expensive. It is out of the price range that most people are willing to pay. And although I would like them, I'd like a couple, to be honest with you, I'm just not willing to pay. And I, I have to believe most people watching this video won't either. If I can get my hands on a, an old Smith revolver, and 357 Magnum or 44. I'll go 44 Magnum, no problem. For a decent price, I'll be all over it. But the new ones, just not feeling the confidence and the way they jacked up the price just takes me out of that market. If you like videos like this, please subscribe and share. I always appreciate thumbs up button. Thanks for watching and you guys be safe.